Carol Dweck's research on growth mindset, does the concept that intelligence and abilities can be developed through hard work and action, and it's not fixed based on what you're born with. And in this video, I'll be exploring the concept of growth mindset and how we can use science-based tools to actually develop a growth mindset. This will help us learn better, perform better, and unlock our full potential. So the first idea is to focus on effort rather than the outcome of something. Dweck's research showed that focusing on effort and congratulating yourself for the effort you put in is actually better than focusing on the outcome of what you actually do. There's been many experiments such as students split into two groups, essentially students who were praised on what they were doing, such as the effort they were putting in, achieved better than students who were praised for who they were, so being told they're intelligent. Because the students that were told that were intelligent but got something wrong, that went against their own idea of what intelligence means and so it felt like it was hurting who they were. Whereas students who were actually congratulated on the effort they put in saw it as a practice of developing and it didn't matter if they got the thing wrong, they were applauded on the effort of trying and they were more likely to keep trying to actually succeed. The key message of this point is that asking for help and trying hard aren't signs of being weak or signs of failure. It's actually a sign of the learning and growth process. On top of that, if you enjoy the thing you're putting in the effort in, it will become a lot more worthwhile and you're less likely to give up because you actually enjoy doing the thing. So for example, when I was learning coding, I didn't use this principle because every time my code failed or it didn't work, I would always think, you know, I'm not I'm not clever enough to understand coding. This is too complicated for me. My code never works. I'm just not built to be a coder. But actually what this point emphasizes is that all of this is part of the learning process. It's like going to the gym and stretching your mental muscle because you're reaching the limits of the knowledge you already know. And the times where your code doesn't work is you building on the knowledge and learning how to do things. Because if your code went perfectly smoothly and you knew everything anyway, you wouldn't be learning anything new. It's just reminding myself that seeing failure is an opportunity to grow and it, it doesn't you know, define who you are, it doesn't mean you're bad, it's simply part of the learning process. And practicing this mindset in reality it means finding something that isn't too easy, that you just don't learn anything because you know everything anyway, but isn't too hard that it just becomes overwhelming and mind boggling and you give up at the first hurdle because it's way too difficult. It's finding that balance in the middle where it's slightly challenging, but you're enjoying it, you're learning from it, you're embracing the failure, you keep pushing on because you find that thing enjoyable. And if you find that balance of it being not too easy and not too difficult, you're in what's called the zone of proximal development, which is where you're going to learn and master the skill the best. And another concept from Dan Pink's book, Drive, is the actual Goldilocks theory, which is where you're in the sweet spot for learning, where it's not too easy on one hand and it's not too difficult. On the other hand, you're in the middle, which optimizes flow and mastery. The second concept is the idea of using stress as a teacher. So we all know that chronic stress is debilitating and is bad for our health, but there's a reason why stress exists. It's moderate short-term stress can actually improve performance, enhance our alertness and help us learn new things and grow. Let me give you an example. So when I was in second year of uni in one of my anatomy seminars, there was a teacher who was well known for just picking on people and just asking them questions. And so I remember one time when I got picked and I got asked this very difficult question, which I didn't know the answer to. That made me just, you know, alert quickly and put me in that stress response and made me use all of my resources to try and figure out the answer to that question because I didn't want to look embarrassed in front of my peers. I wanted to try and get that question right. Anyway, I didn't. But by being put in that stressful environment, from, you know, just zoning out into a lecture, not really absorbing anything, it made me alert and it made me more likely to remember that thing because I was put into the spot. And it's actually been shown that a stress response evokes neurotrophins in the brain, which enforces neural connections to actually help you learn as well. So the moral of the story is stress is good if it's used in a stress enhancing way, 
And of course it's bad if it becomes too much or it develops into chronic stress as it can start affecting you physically as well. And the next concept is about neuroplasticity. So there's been experiments where students were taught about neuroplasticity, which is essentially the concept that intelligence is malleable and you can adapt your brain to learn new things. They actually performed a lot better than students who weren't taught this concept. And a good analogy I like to look at this is going to the gym, right? You need to put stress on your muscles for it to grow. You also need to put stress on your brain for it to grow. And that form of stress comes from practice. And they say, of course, it's cliche, practice makes perfect. But there's a reason why it's a cliche, because it's true, right? The more you practice, the more you develop those neural connections, the more your brain is going to physically grow in response to that and strengthen the connections you use more. You might have heard the saying, neurons that fire together, wire together. That's basically what that means. The more you practice something, the more that gets solidified, right? That's where the basis of habits come from because you've done it so many times that it's just second nature, right? You don't have to think about it because there's automatic default networks in your brain which do the firing because you've done it so many times before, right? That's why you walk without thinking. That's why you drive without thinking because those patterns in your brain have physically literally been established already. And one thing I was taught in childhood, I think it was from a movie, I can't remember which movie, was that your brain grows until the age of 25, after that it stops growing and it's set in stone and that's who you are for the rest of your life, right? This neuroplasticity theory actually disproves that and says our brains can adapt regardless of how old you are. Yeah, it might get harder as you grow older because there's a lot more junk in the brain that you've developed over time, but brain development continues throughout a person's life. It's not limited to just childhood. And this really opens up the landscape for allowing continuous learning and development. Because rather than seeing setbacks as, oh, you know, well, I'm too old for this or I'll never learn this, setbacks is an opportunity to grow and to learn. Perhaps the only thing, and this is probably my own theory, that when we get older is we learn to care more about what other people think. So when we do fail or when we do encounter setbacks, we're less likely to continue persevering. You know, if a child is playing in the swings and he fall, falls over, he's just gonna get up and continue playing. Put adult in the same situation, they fall over once or twice, they're gonna be like, right, I'm not built for this, my joints are getting too much, or I can't do this, I'm too old for this, they're just gonna give up. Because of all this external environment that we picked up throughout our life. So it's about reminding ourselves that actually neuroplasticity isn't limited by a certain age, our brains don't stop developing at a certain age. If you want something bad enough, you wanna learn something new, you wanna master something, if you put in the effort and you put in the practice, you are going to get there. And that just gives a lot more encouragement and a lot more hope for learning something new, for developing something, for changing our lives essentially. So see challenges as opportunities for growth and don't see setbacks as a bad thing. And the whole point of all of this growth mindset thing is that we're in a phase of continual learning and continual development. We're not perfect, we're not robots. If, if we were, you know, AI, we would already know everything because we have the whole world's knowledge in our fingertips. But because we're human, we don't have that. And that's why this growth is a continuous learning process. So if you wanna join me on this continual development process, then I encourage you to join my newsletter down in the description below. If you found this video helpful, then please subscribe to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Abian. Thank you for watching my video and I will see you again in my next video.